right, let's talk money as uh, we get to see what the markets are going to do here momentarily. But uh, it, there's been some concern, and whether you're a 401k investor or maybe you're thinking about investing in the stock market and you're keeping an eye on things, um, it's normal to see some things moving around a little bit. And let me first uh, welcome our guest today, Michael Mazarant, who is here to help us understand all of this, financial instructor from the Retirement Education Foundation. Okay, we're looking there. We saw the green arrow. Yep. Um, <laughs> Opened up today. Yeah, so that's good. Yep. Let's break it down, though. Let's talk about what we've been witnessing the past week or so. Um, and we know the market goes up. There are ups and downs on the stock market. When we see a big drop off, mm -hmm. what's happening? So in this particular case, it's, it helps to zoom out first. The first half of the year was pretty calm and pretty positive. Between January through the peak on July 31st, the market was up almost 19% in a pretty calm, lazy, growing fashion. And so this shakeup is just investors sort of thinking, you know what? But it's been a pretty positive start to the year, mostly because the Fed's been able to bring inflation down pretty calmly <clears throat> while rising interest rates. Historically speaking, when the Fed increases interest rates like this to bring inflation down, it can impact the jobs market. Okay. So far this year, that hadn't happened. So investors are thinking maybe it's sort of a Goldilocks situation hmm. where we were bringing inflation down, it wasn't hurting the jobs market, everything was pretty good. And then on, uh, on Friday last week, we got the July jobs report, and we added less jobs than expected and saw unemployment jump a little bit to 4.3%, which is about the, the highest rate in almost three years. Okay. So investors started to get a little spooked, thinking, oh, hey, hang on a second. The Fed raised interest rates, they kept them pretty high, maybe for too long, and it might have harmed the jobs market. Okay. So is the next move that interest rates are going to drop? So Do the next projection that? is that interest rates will be dropping. Okay. The markets expect that to happen in September at the, at the next Fed meeting. Okay. We'll see that, you know, that's pretty strong indication that they will cut interest rates, especially now that they got this spook in the jobs market. Okay. So... Uh, and we know these are complicated things that when, when we're looking at the stock market, and for many of us, uh, myself included, um, when you, you look at your 401k, and that usually... Um, it, there's going to be some fluctuations, mm -hmm. but that's usually a long-term investment that you don't have to panic. It really, really is. I cannot stress that enough. And in terms of stock market volatility, this is normal. The average intra-year drawdown, the average drawdown in a correction, in a stock market correction, mm. is about 14%. Every single year, whether it happens in the year, early in the year, later in the year, it's on average 14%. What so does that mean, the average drawdown Meaning correction? the market will fall on average every single year at some point, 14%. Okay. Now, some years it's not as bad, some years it can be much worse, but that's the average is 14%. So mm. this kind of volatility is not unusual. Okay, so, and then what, historically what we see is then it bounces up uh, exceeding the 14% drawdown, right? I mean, if you zoom out of a stock chart, look yes. at the last 5, 10, 20, 30 years, yes. it will go up and to the right. It will always recover. That's not the question of will it recover. The answer is yes, it will. It just takes time. And really, if people are logging into their 401ks or their, their stock accounts every single day, it's, pr it's maybe not a good thing if it causes you stress and anxiety. If yeah, you're don't do it too that. often and it causes <laughs> you stress and anxiety, you're going to start to make some, some mistakes by trying to get out of the stock market when you maybe shouldn't be. What is the, is the index fund um, that's still the safest bet, Michael? So the index fund, in terms of diversifying risk, is still the safest bet because inside the index fund, if someone owns the index fund, they own dozens, hundreds of companies. And so even though there are handfuls of companies that might be down on any given day, mm. there are other companies that are up. So owning more, having, you know, not putting all your eggs in one basket, spreading your eggs out. All right. So... Uh, bottom line, uh, don't panic, first of all, and uh, it, not just 401k, but any any time you invest in the stock market, let's say you're an independent investor, uh, the idea is you are, you are supposed to ride it out, right? You are supposed to, and it really comes down to time frames. If we have five plus years before we need these dollars, if someone's in their 20s, 30s, 40s, early 50s, and we don't need these dollars for a long time, yeah. this volatility is not a problem for you. Mm -mm. Now, if we're within maybe five years of retirement, totally different ball game. You've got to start to get some education and a plan together to make sure you have a safety bucket if you do need to retire while the stock market's down. Okay. Yeah. Timing is everything. Um, okay. So next hour when we talk to you, we are going to talk about should you want to take advantage of these dips and dives, how you can do that. Absolutely. Yep. Because uh, you should make this money work for you too. Uh, Michael, thank you. We'll see of you in course. an hour.